I lied. But to be fair, I didn't know I was lying. I didn't know it at the time, but my results testing the EDUP Wi-Fi 6 card on the Raspberry Pi in December weren't quite accurate. It does not, in fact, get 1.34 gigabits of bandwidth wirelessly with the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4, and it probably can't even with a faster computer. I'm usually very thorough in my benchmarking, and if there's ever a weird anomaly, I try everything I can to prove or disprove the result before sharing it with anyone. In this case, since I was chomping at the bit to move on to the 2.5 gig Ethernet card review, I didn't spend as much time as I should have re-verifying my 1.34 gigabit benchmark. In this video, I'll describe how testing this $20 M2 Wi-Fi adapter card suggested by Javier Choclin led me to learning a lot about Linux's wireless networking stack. And full transparency, what really got me started thinking about my performance results was this comment on YouTube by Marvell Marvell, which is kind of a funny username, mostly because Marvell is the name of a major chip manufacturer that's gobbled up a ton of other manufacturers in the past two decades. Anyways, I digress. Marvell Marvell mentioned that the AX200 is a 2x2 chip supporting the MCS11 data rate, which maxes out at 1.2 gigabits, which is definitely lower than the 1.34 gigabits I got in my test. So what gives? Well, let's start with the facts. I always try to stick to a logically verifiable set of facts when I am faced with a strange test result. A couple months ago, when I tested five Ethernet interfaces at the same time on the Intel i340 T4 card, I put each interface on its own network, connecting just that one interface to an individual Raspberry Pi on the same network. I was able to get 4.15 gigabits of throughput with the four interfaces on that card plus the internal network interface on the Pi using jumbo frames. When I tested the EDUP Wi-Fi 6 card the first time, I got 930 megabits of one-way throughput. Then when I tested this Asus 10 gigabit card, which I'll talk more about soon, I got 3.26 gigabits of one-way throughput. When I tested the Intel AX200 chip, which is the same as the EDUP chip, in the MZ How adapter, I got 930 megabits of one-way throughput. Then I tested it again, though I had the Pi disconnected from its wired network connection, and I only got about 600 to 800 megabits of one-way throughput. Wait, what? In hindsight, the problem is obvious, but getting to the point where I could prove what I thought might have happened actually happened took some time. Before I get any further, my original intention for this video was just to test this little adapter card. I was going to test it, see if it worked or not, and then post a video saying, yay, it works, or well, it didn't quite work. Luckily for all of us, life is never that simple. So anyways, I guess I could at least say, yay, it works. If you want to adapt an M2 Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module that you might have laying around, maybe from an old broken down laptop or desktop computer, this little MZ How adapter works a treat. And I have a link to it in the description. Anyways, getting back to the problem I uncovered, I found it odd that both the Wi-Fi tests got around 930 megabits when I tested them the first time. I was using iPerf3's bind option, which according to the documentation, binds to the interface associated with the address given. So if I have two interfaces, let's say eth0 on 192.168.0.5 and wlan0 on .6, and I wanted to test the wlan0 interface, I could just use bind 192.168.0.6, right? Well, no actually. You see, Linux's kernel networking stack is a little complicated, but also highly optimized for getting packets rooted in the most ruthlessly efficient manner possible. In most cases, that's a good thing. Usually you want to get your data to its destination as fast and reliably as possible. But the problem was that the Linux kernel saw that both my wired and Wi-Fi connections were operating on the same network, so it optimized the packet flow for me by routing data through the wired Ethernet connection, even though I told iperf3 to bind to the Wi-Fi connection. Long story short, I'm not the first person to run into this issue, and I found out about a couple things that I could try to combat the problem, like adjusting the ARP filter setting to disable the kernel's intelligent routing, or segregating all my network interfaces on their own subnets when I'm doing benchmarking. But the easiest thing in the end was just to disable the network interface I wasn't testing. So before I rerun my benchmarks now, I run sudo ip-link set eth0 down to disable the onboard gigabit ethernet. 
And after doing that and running more benchmarks, I have to agree with Marvell Marvell. It is, in fact, impossible to get more than 1.2 gigabits of throughput with the Intel AX200. My new benchmarks showed that throughput reached around 800 megabits from the Pi to the router and about 1.1 gigabits from the router to the Pi. These results are still great, and they beat any older Wi-Fi device I have in my house right now, including my $3,000 MacBook Pro. But my whole shtick from the last video that Wi-Fi is faster than Ethernet on this Pi isn't entirely truthful, and so I'm sorry about that. Before I move on from that topic, I should mention that the maintainers of iPerf3 have been trying to make benchmarking work better with multiple devices on the same network, and there's a bleeding edge option I tested called Bind Dev, but unfortunately it didn't make a difference on the Raspberry Pi test yet. Anyways, that was one fail that I turned into a learning experience, and I guess I get a side dish of humble pie with my Raspberry Pi in this new year. In the middle of all this benchmarking, I decided to finally dig in and learn more about the mysterious WPA supplicant thingy that we all use to control Wi-Fi on our Raspberry Pis, or in Debian in general. Specifically, I noticed when I was doing my testing that if I had both the internal Wi-Fi interface WLAN 0 and the PCI Express interface WLAN 1 enabled, WPA supplicant would always choose the external interface. And usually that's what I wanted, so I didn't really question it much. But why did it always choose the external interface? And I realize the number of people with multiple Wi-Fi interfaces on their computers is probably really small, but still, the WPA supplicant documentation shows nothing about how to specify an interface for a configuration. Well, after wondering this a long time, Inspiration finally struck me after I saw this answer from Hans on Stack Exchange. His post reminded me of the obvious fact. I'm using Linux. I can figure this out on my own. Like old Ben Kenobi always said, use the source, Jeff. So I began a bit of a wild goose chase. First, I tried finding the WPA supplicant codebase and documentation and found the docs through this website, but a lot of the links were either broken or weren't really that helpful. I couldn't even find a clone of the source on GitHub, so I switched gears and had more luck searching for the code behind DHCPD, which took me to Roy Marple's website. His site has links to the official code repository as well as a GitHub mirror that's easier to browse. Looking around in the code, I noticed the files that load WPA supplicant on the Raspberry Pi are in the hooks folder. Specifically, the source for the WPA supplicant hook is in this file. Right at the top, it looks like there's my answer. There's a bash for loop that looks for a given set of WPA supplicant files, starting with a file named after the interface. If it doesn't find a file with the interface name in it, it goes to the plain config file. And if it doesn't find either, it goes up one directory into Etsy and searches for the same files. There's still more digging we could do, but my curiosity was satisfied for the time being, and I was itching to get back to testing the sometimes literally burning hot world of 10 gigabit networking. But getting back to the original topic of this video, the MZ How adapter card, I'm actually planning on testing a Google Coral AI TPU with this card, and that's the main reason I bought it in the first place. But it's just a happy accident that I learned a ton about Wi-Fi and Linux networking in the process of testing this boring little adapter. If you learned something today, please consider subscribing and supporting me on GitHub or Patreon. Until next time, I'm Jeff Geerling. A ton of other chip manu... manu I'm, I'm a drat. Specifically, the source for the WPA supplicant... Uh, and I was itching... <coughs> I was itching and coughing, apparently. Uh, I mean, I don't have to say Linux. I'm putting words in where they aren't. Please consider subscribing and supporting me on GitHub or Patreon. Get, uh, my brain and mouth are not really connected today.